Hello, I'm Evan, and today I'm going to reveal a simulation I created a while ago in JavaScript. This is an improvement of the last video on this topic. I will go over what this is, and how it functions. As you can see, this is currently an empty canvas with nothing in it. On the top, there is the frame rate, the number of colonies, and the processing load. On the bottom, there are controls. Before I start the simulation, here are some rules. A colony is in the shape of a circle, and will move at a constant speed at a random angle from 0 to 360. When a colony hits a wall, it will bounce off either 90 or 180 degrees plus a random number from negative 10 to 10. If in close enough range with another colony, the bigger one will travel towards the smaller one. If a smaller colony is inside of a larger one, the smaller one will gradually contract, and the bigger one will slowly enlarge. Some things to note, is that this program works in any orientation. Now let's see what happens, when you add 100. That was nice, but now let's add 1000. My explanation of how it works will go into the calculations needed for this program to work. Let's start with the movement of one colony. When a colony first spawns, it holds data like the direction it will move. This angle is represented by a number from 0 to 359. The reason why it does not go to 360 is that computers count starting from 0 meaning that 0 is the 360th degree. To figure out the next position of the movement you must find the slope of the angle. With the slope, you can figure out where it will go in the future as the slope describes the direction and the steepness of the line. To find the slope, you must convert the angle into radians, unless you are using a calculator that works in degrees. In the programming language I used which is Python, the basic functions of geometry are calculated in radians. Afterward, you have to get the tangent of the value. This slope value can only be used for one of the axes. This is because the slope is a fraction. If the product is 10, that means the slope is equal to 10 over 1. This is a problem though, because the value 10 is large, some colonies would be moving at 10 pixels per second. To fix this, I added a limiter. It divides both the 1 and the numerator by a small value that decreases both values. It continues to divide until the value is below a certain threshold. Now, you can add the numerator and denominator to the x and y axis. As you can see the colony is not moving correctly. This is because you can not just add the values to the axis. This is because the values change from negative to positive and, or to its reciprocal form relative to the angular quadrant it's positioned in. This means you must manually regulate its direction, to ensure it will move correctly. To get the distance of one circle to another, the Pythagorean theorem must be used. The square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. You must square side A and side B, but we do not have the length. You can find the distance along the x-axis by obtaining the difference between the two x-axis. Same for y. Now you can square them and add them together. Then you can take the square root of that number and that is the distance. If the distance is less than or equal to the sum of both radiuses, you have a collision. This works but the program will not work very well as doing heavy calculations the number of times as the number of colonies squared is a lot of computing. I made it where, if the difference between the y1 or y2 of a circle is greater than 3 times its radius it will not check for collision, because there isn't any. Same for x. The reason why I multiplied it by 3 is, that I made its range its radius times 3. 